Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Kevin here, and in the last episode, we spent 26 minutes writing uh, these 12 lines of code. If that is not a sad indictment of how badly I am wasting your time, well, frankly, I don't know what is. But welcome back nonetheless. We spent a lot of time in the last episode talking about the importance of tests and how if you have wonderful tests that test your wonderful functions, you can expect that your functions are gonna do what you thought you meant for them to do, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, there's one interesting part about this. We spent 26 minutes developing these lines of code, these two functions, assert, which we used to check whether or not something was true. So we say one plus one equals two. And if that's not true, it's gonna uh, call throw with an error saying, hey, I expected that to be true. And then the second function, which assert uses, which is throw, you know, rawr, which will force the KOS uh, environment to die. So it will go ahead and print out that message and then it will crash, which is great. But there's something you may notice is that despite the fact that we have these uh, lines of code and I've been yammering on for an, an episode and a few minutes now about the importance of testing, uh, these, co the, these lines of code don't have any tests themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a little gate and call them bad code uh, because they don't have tests. And you may say, well, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, these are the codes that we use to write the tests, right? We're using them to say, this is what we expect to happen. Um, and it seems kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like, what do you expect to do? You know, assert that assert works? Yeah, it works. Yeah, I don't, you yeah, know, working? <laughs> I don't know. You know, expect, using something like assert to test assert. Well, that'd be like me going into a bar and the bartender being like, hey, will you vouch for yourself and say that you're 21? Well, that's not necessarily you know, a reliable way of testing stuff. We don't want to use our assert function to test our assert. And of course, throw is something that we actually cannot test because it crashes the CPU. So we could maybe test it once uh, manually, but there's no way for us to get results back that we can use in a meaningful way. But I want to go ahead and think about um, something we can do. So I've got that stuff gated in bad code. I want to write a different function, I'm gonna call this function assert false. Um, because I talked about this at the end of the episode that I don't like the idea of saying assert not true. That seems weird to me. If I'm asserting, you know, ship name not equals uh, pi, or you know, whatever, whatever the case, assert something, you know, not something, that seems a bit off. I would rather say assert false something then I'm saying I am asserting that this thing should be false. I'm not asserting something that I'm forcing into being true. So I wanna go ahead and write assert false. And we'll get back to this idea of this bad, untestable, terrible, terrible code um, that isn't tested. Let's go ahead and write a function for or call test uh, assert false pass. This is going to be the happy path. What happens when we call assert, assert false, assert underscore false, and something passes? Well, remember with our tests, we have three steps. We have the preconditions, the test, and the post conditions. The preconditions are what is the world like for us to be able to test things? Like if I want to test, you know, what happens uh, to a mogwai if I feed it after midnight, I have to assume that I already have a mogwai. Um, that is a very dated reference, I apologize. Um, and then I would go ahead and I would actually do something. And then I would say, given that I've done something, what do I expect to be different? And that'd be those post conditions. So let's think about what the preconditions are for assert false. Well, there really aren't any, especially if we're just attesting that assert false passes, can, or it can pass. Well, there's really no sort of thing about the world that we need to make sure is in place before we can test anything. We just want to go ahead and say assert false and we'll pass it false. And that should just not throw an error message, right? So what are our post conditions? It's generally bad form to have a test that doesn't have an assertion. What I'd like to be able to do is be able to say something like assert nothing was thrown. But as we've talked about, that's rather challenging to do based on the fact that, uh, yeah, this, this thing actually crashes stuff. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and let myself get by with the fact that there's really not any post condition. And just the fact that this test doesn't crash the system is enough to know that our test passes. So let's just make sure that we're actually calling it. 
There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and run that test. And undefined variable name assert false. Well, that's good because we haven't written it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. Yeah, new assertions. Let's go ahead and create one function. Uh, let's see, assert underscore false. And all we're doing is correcting the error that we got. And the error has now changed. It's mad because our, the uh, number of arguments didn't match. So, okay, we'll go ahead and say parameter postulate. And we'll run that again. And now the tests pass. And in fact, we can go ahead and put down here at the very end, print done. Because if we got to it, uh, well, we'll just say passing. Because if we get to it, then nothing crashed. So, okay, now that we know the things are passing, that's great. Let's go ahead and write the failure case. So what happens when test assert false uh, fails? Well, we know that the code here is going to be assert false true. Now, we need to write enough of a test to make things crash. Uh, things are still passing, so that's not going to do it. In fact, I'm not even calling that function. I apologize. Uh, fail. We need to, what I really want to assert here this gets back to that whole, well, we want to assert that an error happened because an error should happen if we call assert false and we pass in something that's true. If I say assert false uh, one plus one equals two, well, it should be yelling at me about that. But how would we even go about doing that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use our assert function and I'm going to say, hmm, I need to have something that I'm actually testing. I'm going to say assert throw message equals expected uh, true to be false. I mean, that seems reasonable, right? That is at least a good thing to test. That is something that we would expect to have happened. Of course, throw message doesn't exist, though. And in fact, there's not really a way that we can get at it, because if we even touch this function, this throw function, well, the system is going to crash. So it feels like we kind of can't test stuff. And that is unfortunate. And of course, yeah, undefined variable name throw message. We could fix that by going ahead and say, say local throw message is zero. So we can do that. And we get ex unexpected false to be true, which is the error that we're actually getting from um, that assertion. You can see line 26 assert throw message equals expected true to be false and expected false to be true. So it's saying that this equality operation is not equal. So that is very unfortunate. Now, here is where we have to start to dive into some of the stuff that we get with KOS 1.0. So I have the pre-release installed. Um, it could be that it's been released by the time I recorded this video. I am recording it a little bit early. Um, if you do want to mess around with it, it is, it is available on the GitHub, but um, I'm not going to be actually using this for any um, craft stuff until uh, version 1.0 is out. But one of the things that 1.0 actually introduces is anonymous functions. Now, what do I mean by that? So anonymous functions, uh, previously you could say function foo, which was great. You could say, you know, print foo or whatever. And that was a function. Then you could say uh, local bar is foo and you could put that little at sign. And then bar becomes this thing that you can pass in as an argument. It becomes this thing that you can go ahead and, and bind arguments to. And eventually you could even put parentheses on and call it. And that effectively is the same thing as running foo. What you can now do is I'm going to say baz. It's kind of a third keyword. Is I'm going to say it's just this print foo. I'm just going to assign it directly. And this is the exact same thing as creating a function with this as its body and then creating a Baz delegate that points to it. So there's some cool stuff that we can do here, but I want to talk about this in particular. We're going to, we're going to put this to use. So I'm not going to go into it too deeply just yet. We're going to kind of see it in action. What I want to do is say, still looking at this test, what if we just didn't call the throw function at all? What if instead we put in a replacement, an imposter. What if we hijacked the throw function and made it just tell us what message it got, but not crash the system? Well, we could do that, right? Um, I'm going to say set throw to this. We're going to use that new syntax of just assigning it to something that can be called. And it's got to take a parameter, 
message and we'll just say set throw message to message. So now hopefully if a cert call, if a cert false were to call throw, it wouldn't actually call the real throw, right? It'd just call our pretend one. Now, if we try and run this, there are going to be some problems. Particularly, we get this error that the given key was not present in the dictionary. And it's very, very mad that we are trying to set a function for a particular reason. And that is that if we have a function foo, and you try and say, you know, whatever to foo, what this actually does is whatever, and it calls the function first. So it's not actually passing in foo, it's passing in the return value. And that means that when we say set throw to something, what it's really trying to do is set the result of calling throw, which is all sorts of confusing. So what I'm gonna say is we're actually gonna go back up to the top and instead of using functions for throw and assert, we're gonna make them delegates. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this word. I'm gonna say global throw is that, and I'm gonna put a dot there which means it'll operate just in the same way. It just means that we have to execute it by, by like this. And if we said this, it's not gonna go ahead and run it. Um, we can, that means we can talk about the function without accidentally calling it all the time. We're gonna do the same thing with assert just for cleanliness's sake. And so we're just creating a variable and immediately assigning it to this anonymous function. Okay, so let's go back to our test once more and we'll go ahead and run and things are passing again. All right, well, that's, let's see, is that is that sort of what we expected? Well, it is, yeah, it is. It, that's exactly what we expected because we overrode throw. Now, there is one thing that's a little bad here, and that is that we overrode throw, and now throw would be broken anywhere else because throw is this global function. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna say local underscore throw. So actually, let me, let me just, for example, if I go throw Aya, we're not even calling assert. We're just saying throw. It's not gonna, it's gonna be, it's still gonna be passing because it's still calling this one that we overrode it with. So I'm gonna do here is, yeah, I'm gonna say local underscore throw is throw. So we're gonna take the existing throw function and sort of save it aside so that when we overwrite it, we can eventually set it back. And I'll say set throw to underscore throw. And now if I say throw Haya, this should get angry and, and actually crash the system. Uh, I expect a false to be true. Expect it should be false. What? I expect a false to be true. Well, that's a bit weird. Now the throw message is wrong. Why? Um. Hmm. Things were passing before and now they're not. Well, that's fine. Let's comment this out real quick and just make sure, try and figure out what's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's actually completely valid. Let's go ahead and actually get rid of this assertion just for now and just make sure that we've restored throw correctly. Yes. Okay. So it did it did throw the error correctly. Um, we take out that. Now we're actually back to the correct failure message, and that is the throw message. Despite the fact that we overrode throw, is not uh, is not correct, and that's because our assert false doesn't throw anything. Right? So now we need to update our assertion to make this pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and say throw expected postulate, whoops, to be false, to make our test pass. Uh, hiya, expected false to be false. Now, if we look at the very bottom, this is a different test that is failing. It's the first test that we wrote for assert underscore false pass. And that's because we're throwing whether or not, regardless of what you pass in, so you want to say if postulate, then throw a message. Because if because yeah, it's the first test that was actually failing. So we'll go ahead and run this again. And if I can just type correctly. Passing. Okay. So we're back to good. There's one more test that I want to write. I'm actually going to write the call for it here quick. Message. Whoops. Because just like our regular assert function, we want to be able to set a custom message for our assertion. So assert false. Now this is, yeah, it's going to be very, very similar because we're going to hijack throw again because we want to test what the message was. We just want to test custom message. 
And I want to just test here that the result that was gotten was custom message. And of course, if I run this, a uh, number of arguments didn't match. It's mad that we tried to throw a second thing to assert underscore false um, because it only accepts one. If we change it to accept two, well, now we're going to get a message from our older tests because they only sent it one. So we actually have to have a default argument here. And looking at this, since this needs a default argument, why can't it just be this thing here, right? So message, if you didn't pass one in, is expected the thing to be false. And if postulate, throw a message. Now we go ahead and run things. And our tests are all passing. So now we have a new way of doing assertions that is not part of this uh, mess up here of bad code and that is all untested. So that's pretty cool. And we know that it does all of the things we expect it to do because we're actually going through and we have these tests that stub out. And we say, did you try and call throw? And did you try and call throw with the argument we expected you to? And we've tested that you can call it with one argument. We've tested that you can call it with two arguments. We know that this is going to work. So that's pretty cool. Now I want to take it a step further. I'm going to comment out these function calls really quickly, just temporarily. And I'm going to delete this global assert. What I want to do now is I want to write three more tests. I want to write test assert pass. And I want to write test assert fail. And I want to write test assert message. And what I'm actually going to use now, we said we couldn't do that, right? Because if we look at our assert false functions, a function, it's using assert to say that the thing is working or not. But since we can be confident that assert underscore false works, we can use assert underscore false to test assert, just in the same way that we used assert to test assert underscore false. So let's go ahead and write these. Uh, I guess I should probably comment these two out for the moment. Say so a test assert pass. We've got the same sort of thing. We just want to test assert true, and we have really no pre and post conditions. Let's go ahead and test that. And it can I call it now? It's yeah, it's it's mad because assert doesn't exist. It's still finding it from where we had assert before. Let's go ahead and write it. We're writing a new one that's not part of the bad code. Go ahead and run that. And now it's mad because of the arguments. That's fine. That's what we expected. Parameter uh, postulate. And then that test should pass. There we go. Whoa, what am I doing? I think we're back to normal. Uh, let's go ahead and add our test, our failure one, test assert fail. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy most of the stuff that we had from our test assert fail above with a couple of modifications. Let's go ahead and grab these because we're going to need to stub out that throw call as well. And we're going to say, okay, set throw to, yep, give us the throw message. Instead of a testing assert false, we're going to try assert with an argument to false. And the message should be different. Uh, let's see, expected true to be false. Instead, we'll say expected false to be true. And now we're in that position where we're using assert to test assert. So we're going to change that. We're going to say assert false. And that means we've got to test not throw message equals that. I think that'll work. Let's go ahead and I may need to put some parentheses in there, but I think that'll be fine. Um, that's passing and that shouldn't be passing. Go ahead and do that. There we go. Now that's failing. Good, which is what we want. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to, if we're writing test code, we shouldn't be satisfied if it just goes, yep, everything's fine. We want to make sure that it fails first, then we can make sure that it passes, and then we know that things are good. So what does it need to do? Well, it needs to set the throw message. It needs to call throw with expected postulate to be true. And then it's going to crash our first test. So we go back and we make sure that it only does that if not postulate. 
run that and then that should pass. There we go, we're passing again. Then we just have to do our assert message and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this, but just call it with a new, uh, call it with that second argument. Message, throw message, assert false, custom message. Go here, custom message. And we go ahead and run these. Now it's mad because of the number of arguments. That's as we expected. Go ahead and add this. And you notice I'm not cheating. I could go here and start throwing in the default arguments and blah, blah, blah. But we're doing this very much by the book because we're using our tests to write our tests because then we can be confident when we go and actually start writing additional code using our testing library that our testing library isn't gonna accidentally hide some broken edge cases. So our pass now fails because it needs a default argument. Let's go ahead and give it this one because we've got it lying around. And we'll change this to throw a message. And we are passing. So now we have six tests that we've written. And if I go ahead and move these down, now assert, we've completely overhauled assert. Yeah, there we go. Here's our actual kind of run the tests chunk. We've completely rewritten assert. We, writ we wrote a new assert false and we used assert false to test assert and we used assert to test assert false. Let's go ahead and run and just make sure that all six of these, yep, and they are passing. Now that's pretty cool, especially because we've managed to make, to kind of rewrite this a little bit. But what is even cooler is the amount of bad code, the amount of basically untestable code that we have now is just this one global throw method. And we could even, you know, clean up you know, the number of lines, I guess, if we if we really, really wanted to. Um, so I think that is pretty awesome. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and actually use assert and assert false to write some more assertions, like assert equal and stuff like that at some point down the road. But in the next episode, I actually wanna talk about how we can use some more of this new syntax, which I'm actually gonna change these two right here. Uh, global assert is that and global assert false is that to think about how we can write our tests so that we don't have to create all of these additional complications of what yeah so that we don't have to create all of these additional complications of making sure we've added calling our functions and blah 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 what i would love to be able to do is to do something like k unit which i guess i'm basing off of j unit which is an old testing library and say we're going to pass it a function and that function will take a parameter uh, test. And the basically in here, we could say test something I wanted to test and then give it another function and say, okay, now that we've got, uh, you know, and then I could have some, you know, assert you know, five equals five or whatever the heck. Uh, okay, I'm hitting a lot of keys, a lot of extra keys today. This is the syntax that I would like to eventually have. Um, ideal syntax for writing very basic unit tests. And in fact, I'd like to be able to eventually refactor um, even these existing just kind of free floating functions to be part of here, because now we could go ahead and say that, you know, when you register it, we know that we can run it right away. Um, and we don't have to worry about making sure that we have the names of all of the different test functions and stuff that we have. So this is what I'd like to kind of jump into in the next episode. And of course, as usual, we're going to use tests to drive the development of this new syntax. So I hope to see you then. I appreciate you kind of sticking through here. And uh, I promise you that it is all going to be very worth it in the end. So I will see you next week. Cheers.